Howdy. Make a video here. I know most of the pros have videos uh, about their choices for beginners on Nikon lenses, and um, I have a little bit different selection, and that's why I went ahead and made this video, even though there's a considerable number of videos out on this topic by the name, you know, the more well-known name brand photographers that, uh, you know, some of them have hundreds of videos out there, but um, if you're just starting out with a Nikon, this is going to be your first DSLR, or if you have your first DSLR and you just have a kit lens and you've decided you want something a little better, um, it's all a matter of money when it comes to these lenses, and it really is all about the lenses. Uh, as far as you can get great quality photos on a on a Nikon D3000 if you have good glass on it. So um, I personally shoot with a D5100. Uh, that's basically what I can afford right now. And, um, the DX sensors keep getting better and better. Um, I was thinking about upgrading to a 7100 or a 5300 but unfortunately at least on the 5300 they they increased the focusing they improved the focusing and improved the speed by one frame from four to five frames but they didn't like they didn't put a proper buffer in there to handle they doubled the size of the sensor and they didn't they didn't fix the buffer they didn't re-engineer the buffer to handle so yeah, it shoot it'll shoot five frames, and that, I mean five frames. That's it. <laughs> and then it starts going like one frame every 15 seconds. So uh, my little 5100, if I do JPEG fine in large format, that thing will snap away about almost unlimited photos without jamming up. So that's a design flaw in those new cameras. And, there's, you know, it's one of the things that's keeping me from upgrading to it because they kind of shot themselves in the foot, you know. They upgrade the focusing system and they upgrade the speed a little bit and then they, they go and they don't put the buffer in there to handle it. Put a bigger X-Speed chip in there, faster X-Speed 4 or whatever, you know, and then they, they make some bonehead play like screwing and screwing around with the buffer and leaving the buffer the way it Basically, they're always doing something to try to force you up into higher, higher price cameras, and it, it, it's really starting to piss me off. I got to be honest with you. Um, Nikon has a, and I suppose it's all the manufacturers. They they play little games trying to get you to upgrade to cameras. You know, like the bracketing. You know, I'm not going to get off on too big of a tangent here because this is about lenses, but. They just play little games with you, trying to get you to spend more money on fancier cameras. You, you know, the bracketing is another thing they do to you to shoot you in the foot, you know. You have to go to a full format camera, or at least a D300 or something, to get uh, five frame bracketing. Uh, they stick you with three frame bracketing, even with the 7100. Well, I'm not sure about the 7100, but... The D7000, you were stuck with three frames. Now, if you want a, a $300 P7000, not D, but P, $300 camera, now that has five frame bracketing, but you spend $800 you know, on a DSLR and it only has three, three frame bracketing. So that's just to tell you why, you know, why I say they could afford to put it in there. And they, they just screwing with the firmware and stuff. But anyway, this video is about this lens and um, this is the lens you want to start with buy a body only in Nikon and start with this lens right here this is no longer in production it's the Nikon 18 to 70 uh, millimeter now the important thing to know about this lens is this is a semi pro quality lens you can buy this lens used right now if uh, a KEH photo for about a hundred and fifty or sixty bucks and this is semi-pro glass. It's current standard. You're really not giving up anything by going to this. It's uh, 
It's an internal focus. Um, it has ED glass, three ED elements. It has an aspherical element and it's super integrated coated, so sick coated. And that's pretty much, uh, you know, that's pretty much what you're getting here. And you can always tell a better quality or a semi-pro or pro lens because it'll have this distance meter on the focusing uh, distance. If it has a little window there, with the, then you know that you're buying a, a pretty good quality lens. But um, on the specs on this thing, let me see here if I can give you real quickly a few specs about it, a little details. 3.5 to 4.5 aperture, uh, your maximum aperture. Uh, the minimum aperture is F22 on it. Um, 15 elements in 13 groups. It's a DX lens. Usable on FX and DF crop mode, DX crop mode. Uh, ED glass, three elements. The spherical elements, one. Uh, sick coated, super integrated coating, yes. AFS silent wave motor, yes. Minimum focus distance, 1.3 feet. And I have got some really beautiful shots up close with this lens. This is an awesome lens. You don't hear hardly anybody talking about this lens and uh, the pros don't ever mention it. Uh, Nikon don't want to talk about it because they want you to buy the new one. The replacement for this is like a 17 to 85 millimeter and it's an expensive lens. You can pick this one up for under 200 bucks. Uh, and so I'd highly recommend you find one of these like new at KEH Photo or on eBay. Uh, make sure it's the internal focus ED uh, with the sick coating and everything and then after you buy that lens this I think is the best value other than the prime lenses Nikon has in a zoom lens for $150 this is the best value you can buy in a Nikon lens today currently bar nothing this is a semi-pro glass for 150 bucks 18 to 70 millimeters so start here regardless of what you hear on other videos start here it takes a poor guy to find the value that you need you know um, we'd all like to have the holy trinity and we'd all like to have a 70 to 200 2.8 i'd love to have one but i don't want to spend 1800 dollars to get it that's the problem and i don't you know i don't i don't uh, make money I don't make a living with photography, so it's hard for me to justify plopping down two grand on a lens, you know. Just can't do it. Now, the companion lens to that is this one here. It's the, It picks up where that leaves off. This is a uh, 4.5 to 5.6, 70 to 300 millimeter. Be careful if you go to buy this lens because they have a previous version to this, 70 to 300 that is not this quality. Um, this is uh, internal focus, ED, it has two ED elements, and it's aspherical, and it's sick coated, it's a super integrated coating on it. So it again has your focus meter. When you're looking for it out there used, you can tell because this has got VR. It's got a little red stamp here that says VR on it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, that's how you can tell when you see a picture. But just be careful if you buy one of these to make sure you get the IFED version with the uh, vibration reduction. It's got normal and active for the autofocus and the, it's got your on off for your vibration reduction and uh, manual and, man and manual auto switches. This one here just has the manual auto switch. But these two are companion lenses. 18 to 70, 70 to 300, and both the same specs basically. They're both internal focus um, with the ED glass and SICK coating. So semi-pro glass. Semi-pro glass, I've seen images from this lens compared to the 2.8 70 to 200, that $1,800 Nikon lens. And if you get up in the 
aperture range that this one has. If you shoot this one at, uh, you know, 5.6 aperture at, say, 150 millimeters, the images are pixel peeping. They're almost identical. There's almost no difference in the quality between the images. Now, you don't have, you don't have the, it's not as fast. You don't have quite as good a low light, but actually the bokeh out of this lens is pretty decent because of that focal length. You get a pretty good bokeh on this lens when you get above 100 millimeters. The bokeh is pretty decent on it. So, great lens. Pick both of these. I got this one for $279, including shipping. I was lucky on that. Most of these go for about $330 to $350 used. This thing's like brand new, so is this one. I've got, I paid $220 for this. You can buy these for about $150 now. I've seen them out there as cheap as that. But this is a very well kept secret in the Nikon uh, world. This is the best Nikon lens value there is. I think this is even better value than the prime lenses because of that zoom range, you know. Um, but that's the only other thing. You start with these two lenses and then get you some fast glass, cheap. Um, I would suggest starting with either the 35 or the 50 millimeter um, 1.8 G lenses, the primes. I particular I, I picked the 50 millimeter because it's a little better glass than the 35. You can tell again because the distance meter is on the 50 and it's not on the 35. The 50 has got an aspherical element. The 35 does not. It's sick coated. The 35 is not. So it is a little better lens. It's a semi-pro lens. Both of these lenses are semi-pro. So the only reason these aren't pro lenses is because they're not the aperture. Is, it doesn't go down quite as low as it needs to be for a pro offering. So, but the quality of the images that come out of them are fantastic. So this is what this is the way I would go. And I, like I said, it's a little different than. Um, there's several videos from professionals out there that have their ideas about um, most of us all agree on the prime lenses of being a great deal but but uh, this here is the way I'd go these two companion companion lenses when the word gets out on this little 18 to 70 you're gonna have a hard time finding these they're gonna disappear uh, and like I say they're no longer in production because this is a fantastic value it's truly the best value you can get in any Nikon lens right now uh, buy this pick this up you can pick one of these up for 150 or 160 bucks you know it's a great it's fantastic semi-pro lens and 18 to 70 is a great walk around lens I had for the first year I had my camera this is the only lens I had and I I really got along great you know and I, I picked this up this is the companion to it so they both have the silent wave motors uh, this is the semi-pro offering from Nikon for the DX sensors and uh, you can buy these lenses used uh, for about 500 bucks you can get both of them so outstanding value add a prime or two primes 35 and 50 add put those in your bag and you're all set you're ready to rock and roll so anyway I think that'll conclude my video and I hope you enjoyed it I hope it gave you some information that 18 to 70 is a well-kept secret in the Nikon world Nikon don't talk about it much because they want you to buy the new lens they have. And I don't know why, but you don't hear the, the, the pros don't talk about it either. It's just kind of slipped under the radar. Nobody seems to notice it much. But I did a lot of research, and that's how come I ended up buying that lens. Um, because it looked like a great value for the money, and, and it is. It's fantastic value. So um, Anyway, that's my two cents on the... Um, the subject of what to get if you're a new DSLR owner or if you're a new owner and you have a kit lens and you want to get something better you can't beat this you really can't beat this this is the way I would start out you know if you're a beginner or even an advanced beginner hope it helped you thank you for watching the video